Over the last few years, Netflix has become the gold standard when it comes to streaming platforms. Every year, they attract more and more big name filmmakers like Scorsese, Zack Schneider, and many more. The question is, do you need a Netflix approved camera to actually get your project on Netflix? That's something that we're gonna discuss today along with the cheapest cinema cameras that you can buy in 2024 that are actually Netflix approved. So I thought that I would organize this list from the most recently added and most expensive cameras, and then we would go all the way down to the cheapest cinema camera that you could buy right now in 2024. And then at the end of this video, we're gonna discuss if you really need a Netflix approved camera and why. So the first camera on this list was just recently added in the tail end of 2023, and that was the Ursa Mini Pro 12K, but the OLPF version. And personally, I was pretty excited to see this because I've been a huge fan of Blackmagic, and I've actually been using the Ursa Mini Pro 12K for the last few years now. Personally, I absolutely love this camera, so let's jump into some of these specs. This camera comes with a Super 35 sensor. It has the ability to shoot up to 12K resolution at 60 frames per second which currently, this is the only cinema camera in this price range that can shoot in 12K resolution. It has 14 stops of dynamic range, built-in ND filters, and it has the ability to shoot up to 240 frames per second in 4K. And the price of this camera comes in at just $6,385. $6,385. Now, I promise you guys, this is the most expensive camera on this list. And it's primarily because it's a pretty new camera. Blackmagic just came out with it last year and there's not many used versions of this camera on the market. But while we're on this topic of Blackmagic cameras, there's another really great Blackmagic camera that is approved by Netflix as well. And that is the Ursa Mini Pro G2. Now, of course, this camera is a few years old, but it still packs a mean punch. Just like the Ursa 12K, this camera has a Super 35 sensor. It has 15 stops of dynamic range. It can shoot up to 4.6K, up to 120 frames per second, and it can shoot up to 240 frames per second in 1080. And of course, just like the 12K, it comes with built-in ND filters. And you could actually find this camera used in great condition for under $2,000, which in my opinion is a crazy steal. And I know a lot of people don't like to buy used cameras, and I totally get it because you never really know what you're gonna get. But just to let you guys know, myself, it, along with a bunch of my filmmaker friends, I have never heard of a camera that has died from overuse. So if you're worried about how many hours or how much use a camera's had, that's probably not the thing that I would worry about. I would just make sure that all the functionalities of that camera and the original parts are intact with that camera. As long as it's working fine and you have all the original parts on the camera, it should be fine. So if you're trying to get a good solid camera at a great price, I would definitely consider looking into the Ursa Mini Pro G2. All right, the next camera on this list really took the filmmaking world by storm when it came out a few years ago because of its portability and low light performance, and that is the FX3. The FX3 has a full frame CMOS sensor. It can shoot 4K up to 120 frames per second. It has 15 stops of dynamic range, dual native ISO of 800 and 12,800. Incredible autofocus, in-body stabilization, and I recently bought this camera used for $2,800. Now it is a newer camera, so you might have to hunt a little bit on eBay to find it for a lower cost, but even at a brand new, right out of the box camera, you're only spending $3,800. It is easily one of my favorite cameras on this list. The next camera that I absolutely have to mention is the C500 by Canon. The C500 comes with a super 35 millimeter sensor. It has the ability to shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second. It could shoot Canon raw 10 bit. It has built-in ND filters, 15 stops of dynamic range, and it has a native ISO of 640. And the one thing that I have to say about Canon is that every time I see the color grading out of one of these cameras, I'm always shocked. I always think it's either a red or even sometimes an Ari. And I notice that it's it's shot on Canon. I'm like, wow, man, like the skin tones and the colors that these ca these cameras produce have always been insane to me. I remember when this camera first came out and I remember it was like on my wish list when this camera first came out. It's crazy to think that so much time has passed since then and now you could get this camera for under $2,000, which to me, again, a lot like the Ursa G2 is an absolute steal. 
Okay, next we are moving on to a couple of cameras from Panasonic, particularly the Lumix line. And the first one that we're talking about is the Panasonic Lumix BS1H. This camera has a full frame sensor. It has 14 stops of dynamic range. It has the ability to shoot up to 6K resolution. And it has a dual native ISO of 640 and 4000 which is not bad at all. And I was able to find this camera used in 2024 for only 1800 bucks. Panasonic also has the Lumix S1H on this list that I actually found for $100 cheaper. This camera comes with a full frame CMOS sensor. It shoots 6K at 24 frames per second. It has 14 stops of dynamic range. This camera can shoot 60 frames per second, but only at 4K and below, and it will crop in. So that is the one downside about this camera. But I think the benefits of having a camera like this, a lot like the FX3, is that it's a small form factor. You get a lot for what you're paying for. In my opinion, it's really great for running gun filmmakers that just want a small compact body and that don't want to carry around a big cinema camera. And a lot like Canon, these cameras really do produce a great image. Now, me personally, I've never used a Lumix camera, but I have seen footage shot on this camera. And I have to say, I couldn't tell the difference between this and a Sony or a Canon. So this is definitely something to think about, especially if your budget is within that $15 to $1,700 range. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I saved the best for last. And in my opinion, this is the one of the best bang for your buck cameras that you could possibly buy in 2024. And the camera that we're talking about today is the Sony FS7. Now this camera definitely has some miles on it. And even though it's about 10 years old, it's still one of the most reliable workhorse cameras that money can buy in 2024. Now taking into consideration that this camera came out about 10 years ago. So right now the specs might not be that crazy, but when it first came out, this camera was absolutely epic. This camera comes with a Super 35 CMOS sensor. It can shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second. In 1080, it could shoot all the way up to 180 frames per second. It has 14 stops of dynamic range. It shoots 10-bit 422. It has a native ISO of 2000. And of course, it has built-in ND filters. This camera has been used on so many documentary projects that we know and love. In fact, this was the primary camera for the first few seasons of Last Chance U. I think that if you're a filmmaker looking to go above and beyond the budget that they have and really trying to get the most bang for your buck, I think that this is a great cinema camera to think of, especially if this is your introduction into cinema cameras. I've actually found this on eBay right now for just under $1,100. Now, who knows how long you're gonna be able to have this camera for, who knows if it's gonna last the duration of your project, but let's just think about that for a second. You get a pro-grade cinema camera that has shot a ton of really great projects that we all know and love for only $1,000, in my opinion, that's a steal, especially since it's on the Netflix approved camera list. But speaking about the Netflix approved camera list, let's have a quick discussion. You know, I get a lot of questions. Do you need a Netflix approved camera to get your project on Netflix? And I've had a lot of hate on another video that I put out not too long ago. It was the original Netflix camera list that I put out last year. And I got a lot of comments about people being like, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't need a Netflix approved camera. And the truth is, is that it depends. When I was shooting for my docu-series, I had every intention in getting this sold to a major streaming platform like HBO or Netflix. And me and my team were using cameras that actually at the time were not Netflix approved. We were using the Blackmagic Pocket 6K cameras. And to be completely honest with you guys, when we were making this docu-series, I definitely had moments where I was a little bit nervous and scared because these cameras weren't on the Netflix approved list. But when I teamed up with a production company and producers that regularly sell shows to all the major streaming platforms, they sat me down and they asked me all about the project and they you know, wanted to know about the characters and the story. But the one thing that was in the back of my mind was, do I need a Netflix approved camera? So I asked them straight up and I was like, hey, you know, we shot all of this on our Pocket 6Ks. Is that gonna be a problem? They very quickly let me know that that is absolutely not a concern and not a concern that they had for the project at all. And then when I asked them, so, you know, what is the purpose of the Netflix approved camera list? They very quickly told me that the only reason why they have a Netflix approved camera list is for preferred production company vendors that Netflix uses to make Netflix originals. So all the hysteria and all the 
obsession with having a Netflix approved camera. It matters a little bit, you know, it kind of gives you a peace of mind and you kind of have that stamp of approval, which is nice, but it doesn't mean that they're not gonna take your project for it. So just keep that in the back of your mind. And the other thing that I would tell you guys is, if you're a filmmaker, you know, I would say, spend a little less time worrying about the gear and spend more time focused on how I can be a better filmmaker. And I have a ton of videos on my channel about that. And if you guys wanna check those out, I'll leave a link right up here or down below and you guys can check that out. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for stopping in, hanging out, and I'll uh, see you guys next week. Deuces.